and we're going to talk about object to image receptor distance or OID. Here's the learning objectives that I've identified. We want to describe the effects of OID on subject contrast. Um, and I want to point out right now that OID is one of those things that's like you kind of forget about it, but it has a little piece of everything. So it's going to affect things like contrast, magnification, sharpness, a lot, right? Um, so that's, I want to point that out, that that's both geometrical qualities of the image as well as the, some of the technique qualities of the image are being impacted by the OID. So it does have an effect on image sharpness. It, there's a relationship between OID and magnification. And then given changes in an object to image receptor distance, can we calculate things like magnification and relative sharpness, right? Because I, an in, if we want to uh, improve contrast, an increased OID is good. But what happens is as we're increasing contrast, we're also increasing magnification and increasing unsharpness. Right? So it's not perfect is what I'm saying. It's not the best way to improve our image contrast, but it is uh, something that we still employ. So the way that the registry generally asks uh, questions about this has to do with um, the air gap technique, right? And using an air gap technique to improve subject contrast means you use an increased OID to improve subject contrast. Why? Because the scatter's flying out in all these different angles, right? So if I increase the distance, some of that scatter is not going to reach the image receptor. So I'm allowing the scatter to miss its target, right, by increasing that object to image receptor distance. So we can say that an increased OID has a positive impact on subject contrast. And there's a figure illustrating that in the textbook. What, and what, another way of saying this is increasing the OID decreases the intensity of the scatter reaching the image receptor. So that's just saying the same thing from a different direction, right? When we use the word intensity in medical radiography, we're talking about how many photons are getting somewhere, how many photons got there, right? So this is another way of saying increasing the OID decreases how many photons got to the image receptor, right? So a lot of them were flying at it, but because we increased that distance, most of them, some of them flew off in a different angle and missed it, right? Um, a, the significant thing here is that the OID does not affect the primary beam geometry. What am I talking about? Well, one of the things I think about when I think about the primary beam geometry, and this is a little weird, but I think about Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, right? <laughs> Pretty iconic album cover. It's got a pyramid, right? And there's light hitting one side of the pyramid, and there's a spectrum, there's a rainbow coming off the other side of the pyramid. Y'all familiar with this album cover? So there's light hitting one side, there's a spectrum coming off the other side. What has happened to the light is its geometry has changed, right? It has changed. But what I'm saying here is that increasing the OID does not affect the primary beam geometry. So imagine rather than the, the refraction occurring, which is what's happening to the light, the light's being refracted into a rainbow, just imagine that the light passed through the pyramid and light exits the pyramid. The geometry of it has not changed at all. So as I increase the distance, the x-ray the, the photons are still just diverging out from that point source of radiation. Their angle of divergence has not changed. It's still roughly this cone or pyramid shaped angle of divergence. This is a really important thing to know about scatter. Interestingly enough, it follows the inverse square law, right? So if we're producing enough scatter, it's following the inverse square law. So we can actually calculate the amount that OID would decrease scatter reaching the image receptor distance, uh, image receptor. We can calculate that given a small enough field size. So there's a little caveat there, but each time the OID is doubled, basically scatter falls to one fourth, right? By that same um, calculation that we looked at earlier, right? But since the distance was doubled, 
the intensity is quartered, right? Or another way of saying that is the intensity is um, decreased by two squared. When I say quartered, it's one over two squared, one over four. All right, well, let's talk about OID and image sharpness because it's not all good in the world of OID, right? We just said that it can improve our subject contrast, but what does it also affect? It affects image sharpness. So as I increase my OID, the sharpness goes into the crapper, right? We start to get pictures that are not so sharp. Now, we've mentioned that sharpness is not something we can actually measure. What we can measure and calculate is unsharpness. We can calculate unsharpness. When we talk about sharpness, it's probably better to use the term relative sharpness, right? And so if, 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 I'm, if this, all this sounds new to you, please make sure you go back over um, the section on geometrical values of the image from last trimester, because he goes in depth on that uh, in that in that section when we talked about geometrical factors. But just know for today that as OID increases, sharpness decreases, and relative sharpness can be calculated by SOD over OID. That will give me the relative sharpness. Um, that is helpful to know, right? But again, going back to what do we really need to know for every day in our life as an x-ray tech, is that as I increase my OID, I'm losing some of my image sharpness, right? So it goes back to like, what will I expect to happen? I can't get the image receptor right where I want it to be, right? There's something blocking the way. Patient's shoulder is blocking the way, or this sponge or this pillow is getting in the way, or the, the orthopedic hardware is getting in the way in this post-op uh, x-ray, and I can't get the image receptor as close as I want it to be. What's going to happen? The image is going to start to get kind of blurry. Finally, OID impacts magnification. So as OID increases, magnification increases. Now, it's important to point out that this is a geometrical factor of the image, but it is different from sharpness. So it is not really a correct to say that, for example, as magnification increases, sharpness increases. We can't make that leap because they are two separate geometrical values, right? I want to really stress that. They, um, OID increases, it increases magnification. That's one little item on the buffet line. Move, move on down the buffet line. Oh, okay, OID also just increased on sharpness. Um, so uh, they usually go together. An increase in magnification uh, it can increase in image sharpness, but uh, they don't necessarily... Uh, they're not necessarily wedded together. There are instances where we could increase magnification with, without impacting image sharpness. Examples of that uh, are in fluoro. When we do those magnification views in fluoro, we're using a different process to magnify the image. It will not affect sharpness, okay? It will increase patient dose, but not sharpness. So magnification equals sit over sod. So um, relative sharpness was what? Sod over oid, right? And magnification sit over sod. So it's very important that we pay attention to these, each one of these things. One of the reasons I wanted to have this lecture at this point in our trimester is to really ground us again is as we're in the lab doing our digital technique charts, just how important it is to be calculating and to be measuring things like the SID, the separation, the part thickness that we're passing x-rays through, and having in the back of our mind, okay, well, how does that influence the OID? How does that affect um, the, the source to object distance? Things like that, right? Because all of those have some bearing on the images that we produce. Thank y'all.